Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 37 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. I am Brent Coley, your host, and joining me today, sitting across from my desk, I am in my office at school right now, and I have two of our amazing fifth graders. I have Jillian and Xavian. Jillian, how are you? I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Coley. How are you, Xavian? I'm doing good. Fantastic. I'm thrilled, guys. You asked me before we started recording, Mr. Coley, why did you choose us? And I said, I'm going to wait to tell you until we start recording. Guys, I chose you because this podcast, you probably haven't listened to it, but this is about stories. Do you like listening to stories? Oh, yes. I love to. Xavier, you like stories? Yeah. Everyone likes stories. So what I do, guys, is I make a podcast where I have talked to teachers... I've talked to Mr. Walton, one of our fifth grade teachers, and we say, tell us a story that we can learn from. But I've always talked to adults. I have always wanted, this is episode 37, I want to talk to students. You are the students that I want to talk to. To answer your question, why did you choose us? You guys, I know, have good stories. You guys are very articulate. Do you know what that means? You speak very well. (laughs) <laughs> I've gotten that comment you've, a lot. You've gotten that comment a lot. So I figured you guys would be perfect to share stories. And for anyone listening, the topic here is I asked Jillian and Xavier, and I said, guys, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the three favorite memories, your best memories of elementary school. They are both in fifth grade. So this could be anywhere from kindergarten up through halfway through fifth grade. Your favorite memories of fifth grade. Jillian, do you want to start? You um, want to tell us one of your stories? What's one of your sure, favorite memories? You. Well, I've got to say, um, my in my second grade year, I loved my teacher. Uh, it was Mrs. Romo, and she was just awesome. She did everything awesome. But my memory is when I brought in for my birthday strawberries and whipped cream. It is our family tradition, and I brought them in. And the first thing all the kids went for was all the whipped cream. And it was homemade, so it, so it was delicious. My mom made it just the just that day, and the kids devoured the whipped cream. And there, there were a ton of strawberries. They devoured everything. And by the end of the day, my favorite thing was that they came out of the classroom covered in whipped cream and it looks like they had just gone to like a salon or something and gotten uh, like a face Like mask. a facial, they had like a yeah. whipped cream face a face yeah. mask. And it was hilarious. I've got a picture somewhere. You actually. got a picture? That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Xavier, what about you? G- tell us one of your favorite memories. I'd say one of my favorite memories is third grade, I don't remember when, Okay. but it was the day Jillian and I became best friends. Uh. How did that happen? Uh, Were you in the same class? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we basically just like started a conversation, like talking back and forth about what we like, and then like we just started hanging out with each other a whole bunch, and so I figured we're probably best friends. That's awesome. And it's been like that for what? For three, three years. For three years yeah. since then, because yeah. you guys are yeah. now in fifth grade. Very mm-hmm. cool. And we were frenemies yeah. in second. I, I, I told on him a lot, oh, and boy. he actually got benched for oh, putting... No. Well, let's not get... Uh, let, let's not get... To, let's not incriminate Xavier well, <laughs> on on tape, because, again, this is like people... Yeah. The world could be listening to this. Anyway. We've all made we've all made choices. That's yeah. okay. So you guys are awesome. So, Z- or Jillian, do you have a second story, a second favorite memory? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, this is a pretty good one. Um, it didn't... It, it happened more as a non, well, it was a school event, but it wasn't really something that incorporated with schoolwork. It okay. was uh, last year's talent show. Ah. I went to audition with um, with uh, a comedy act. Okay. And a uh, little bit later that week, Miss Molitor called me in to her uh, classroom. And Miss Molitor is one of our yeah. teachers who was the talent show coordinator yes. who was organizing it all uh-huh. and she called me in with a fifth grader um i think his name was josh mm-hmm. yeah and she just explained to us that we both did a comedy act and we were both 
absolutely amazing at it. So we were both going to be the MCs of the talent show. Mm. And I, I basically just jumped off the walls. It was so exciting. Because How much fun did you have during the comedy during during the talent show? I had so much fun. Uh, I'm not I'm not a true comedian yet, but uh, yet yet um, growth mindset. Mm-hmm. But uh, there, I really just got to express my comedy of talent. <laughs> uh, Josh was is very comedy of too. Uh, we put together a, an entire script. It was so fun, and I've got to say the last act with everyone in it. I uh, can't stop the feeling where mm-hmm. everyone was just dancing and there was so it was so fun and I'm never going to forget it. That's awesome. You did you did a fabulous job of emceeing by the way. Savian, your turn. Tell us another story of one of your favorite memories from elementary school. I'd say one of my favorite memories was this year when we went to Pathfinder. So Pathfinder Ranch if for, if I can <coughs> interrupt you for a second for anyone listening Fifth graders at our school in our district, we go to outdoor science school. It's a three-day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They stay overnight, two nights, an outdoor science school camp. Continue, Xavier. So one of the best, two of the best things that I did was archery Mm -hmm. and horseback riding. The horse that I got was really funny. His name was Biscuit. (laughs) What did he, did he do anything that was particularly funny yeah he'd like speed up and then slow down (laughs) okay did you get any bullseyes when you did archery um i don't remember i think i might have gotten one okay but one of the kids in my group he actually shot the tree he missed the target and shot the tree yeah (laughs) very cool jillian you went to pathfinder too yes i did Did, what, what was your uh what, did you have any favorite memories from, from Pathfinder? I'd have to say that uh, archery, canoeing, and horseback riding were probably pretty high up on the list, along with the bonfire. The bonfire was fun. Uh, Zabian and I actually did an act together. Uh, it, for anyone listening, if you know Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, we did Kentucky Fried Chicken the song. And, and we had, uh, along with Eric and Sophia, okay. and it was amazing. <laughs> and then horseback riding was pretty cool, too. My horse's name was Red, which pretty well suited me. Mm-hmm. And he, he's a lot like me, except a little headstrong. He's, he's pretty headstrong. Every time I wanted him to kind of slow down a little bit, he'd just speed up more. And every time I'd want him to speed up, he'd be like, mm-mm. No. And, Slowing down, slowing down. Had a mind of his own. Uh huh. Okay, so last story. You said you said you had three. What's your What's your third favorite memory of elementary school, Jillian? Oh my goodness. Uh, this This was a pretty cool cool story. It's kind of incorporated with Pathfinder, but it's like it was after Pathfinder. Okay. After After Pathfinder, we were on the bus. We were on the bus ride home. And there was this giant joke that there was an alien spaceship following us. Do you remember that? And we just kept, and we, it it was pretty funny. We just kept, we just kind of played out like aliens. Like, Zabian can do a mad alien voice. And we played out aliens. Like, we were pretending to be aliens to the other students, and we're like, the aliens are coming to get you. <laughs> it, but that's that's pretty memorable because memorable because um, we uh, we were just playing around, and then someone came up behind us, and they, it, you know how I do the electric shock? Uh-huh. That's where I got the electric shock. They reached behind, and they went, Aliens! Pretended it's like uh-huh. some like an yeah. alien was behind you. Uh huh. And it scared us to death. But uh, at at the very end, we just all ended up laughing because it was so fun. Very fun. All right, Xavier. Last story. What's your favorite? One of your top three memories from all of your elementary school experience. Well, I'd have to say this is also kind of with Pathfinder. After we got off the buses. My mom was a little late picking me up, okay. so Jillian and I found this really big stick, and at skit night at Pathfinder, we played a prank on my mom and Jillian's mom. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. We, told, we told my mom to hold one end of the stick and Jillian's mom to hold the other, and then we said we had a candy shop, 
but we don't have any other candy, but we only sell two dum-dums on a stick. Because your parents were chaperones at the camp. My mom wasn't. Mine was. Oh, okay. But that was one of the that was one of the acts, and they actually had the teachers come uh, up and do it. I know. I I was one of those teachers once. I was one of the dum dums on a stick. How about that. So, well, Jillian and Xavier, the reason that I asked you to do this to think of your three, both of so we've heard like six different stories from six years or five and a half years of elementary school, kindergarten through fifth grade we're recording this halfway through your fifth grade year and for any educators listening right now you'll notice that of all the six stories Xavier and Jillian none of your stories were about worksheets were they no that that wasn't your favorite none of your stories were about tests that you had to take none of your stories were about that problem that you had to do or anything like that and that's not to say that i mean we obviously have you learned anything here at alta marietta our school i've learned a ton okay and that's good whoo that's good to hear but i think the the purpose the moral of the story for anyone listening if you're a teacher listening you've just heard from two of our fifth graders telling six different stories none of them were academic Meaning, none of them's, oh, that page 57 in my math book, oh, that is the best page that I've ever done in elementary school. That was the best. I went home and told my mom about it. You didn't tell me that story. Now, or anything like that. Now, and that's the, per- if you're listening to this, teachers or principals or anybody or parents, if you're listening to this, it's, you've just told me stories, guys, about experiences. School should be an experience because you told me stories about how you guys became best friends you told me stories about a skit that you did you just, i've already forgotten what was your first story jillian um mine was about my second grade teacher that's and strawberries did. and whipped cream so, so the first story you told the first thing that came to your mind was strawberries and whipped cream teachers administrators if you're hearing this I would hope that you would take from this episode that I'm taking from it is Jillian and we got to make sure that we make school not only academic we all it can't be all strawberries and whipped cream mm. I mean we, we do have to crack the map math book and we do have to teach you which is good but we have to balance that with fun right. experiences because again none of your stories none of, I mean and that's not to say you don't have fun because I'll put you on this spot right here do you like your teacher? Oh, yes. yes. I love her. What do, you, what do you love about Mrs. Marcus? Because Mrs. Marcus, if you're listening right now, we're going to give you a shout-out worldwide. Oh, Miss Mar- uh, I just got to say the best thing about her is that she always finds a way to make something fun. Like, um, I, I wasn't here personally, but shout-out to Miss Marcus. She gave us some exciting news a couple, mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago, and the way she did that was... Um, uh, we did a math page. It was a secret code. And they had to decode it. We had to decode it. And the exciting news was on the, was on the decoded message. So, so it was like she gave you a code and you had to crack the code and this equal the letter, this equal the letter. And once you put it all together, you were able to read something. And yeah. Xavier, what, what was the message? The message was our teacher is having a baby. Mrs. Marcus is pregnant. She's having a baby, which is exciting news but rather than just say hey boys and girls I'm she took that and she made it into a learning fun experience yeah that's exactly what I think a teacher should be teachers shouldn't be okay class take out your math books turn to chapter seven I think teachers in my opinion should have more fun yeah they should find a way like okay students turn to chapter seven and let's solve and let's write write out a decoded make your your own decoded message for the class to solve or do like cahoots cahoots are a fun way to learn Uh, cahoots for anyone not listening Xavier, what's a cahoot Kahoot is basically a set of 10 questions or however many questions you want to make it. And basically, it's like a math question or just any kind of question. And there are different answers. So if it was, what is 94 subtracted by 73? Mm -hmm. You could put like 21 as an answer, 7 
and it could be different answers. So there's like four multiple choice answers. Yeah. yeah. And so when you go into co- the create a Kahoot, you give the person as much time, the people who are playing it as much time as they as you think they would need. Mm-hmm. You select the correct answer. So in this case, it'd be 21. And you'd basically get to solve your problem. And and you've played cahoots that Mrs. Marcus has created, mm-hmm. but you have also created We've, you created your own cahoots. Yeah. Did yeah. you learn by making those? Uh-huh. Yeah. And it actually, uh, I think that's another important thing that comes with learning. Not only do the teachers have to teach you, but sometimes just kids have to teach themselves. Mm. Like by making their own cahoot, they took what the our our teacher has taught us and then put it into our own extensive minds and we work together as teams to solve all those challenging puzzles and it was really really fun in the end you learn best by teaching mm-hmm. as i mean, I taught for a long time too and so many times i got really good at things because i taught them if you have to know it in order to teach it so i agree with you jillian the best one of the best ways to learn is to teach to teach something so guys thank you you're welcome this was awesome this was this was even better than I anticipated. And for anyone listening, mom, dad, because at least my mom and dad are listening, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. So for anyone listening, I hope you got something out of this because, again, I can, I, I've had 36 previous episodes leading up to this. And we've talked to amazing educators, but who better to tell you, Jillian said it, this is what a teacher should be. This is how school should be. Xavier and Jillian, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. I appreciate it. And for everyone listening, thank you. Hopefully you got something out of of this. And as always, if you have not already subscribed, subscribe. You can get it in the iTunes store or Google Play. Just do a search for Teaching Tales. And if you like what you hear, not only subscribe, please drop a review. Because again, that helps a rating, a review. Helps get the word out to hopefully get this to into the hands and on the iPods and everything of as many educators as possible. You can also find it on my website at brentcoley.com. Jillian, Xavier, thank you again. Everyone, thanks for listening. And until next time, have a good one.